my battery low. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, hello everyone and uh, thank you for tuning into the channel. Uh, today briefly I wanted to actually talk about uh, a recent film that I've seen a few times now but uh, I wanted to talk about it and I haven't quite gotten my thoughts on it yet to write about it. Um, usually I tend to talk about on video the things that I have written some reviews so that way you can also if you don't want to hear me rant uh, you could always go back and read what I have written. But, uh, I have written a lot about other Guy Pierce material actually at In Session Film, um, but uh, this was the uh, 2022 uh, Liam Neeson movie Memories, uh, co-starring Guy Pierce and Monica Bellucci. I've watched it several times now and I just can't quite wrap my head around it. <laughs> um, I don't think it's necessarily a bad movie. I, it is entertaining if you, if you like the characters, uh, or the characters more so if you like the actors. Um, it's, it's easy to watch as a fun kind of background kind of action movie, but I think therein is also the problem with the film. It is based on a Belgian film that's based on a novel and director Martin Campbell, again, all-star cast. Um, I think you expect more of it, and I think that's because the material there should be more of it. Um, it plays like an action film that is poorly paced because the action sequences are kind of few and far between. Um, you know, you've got Liam Neeson, you know, doing some re really intriguing, you know, garrottings and, you know, and some unique kind of shootings and, and going, you know, beating up and taking names, even though obviously he is suffering from amnesia. And Guy Pierce is the FBI agent who's kind of following in this, trying to piece this case together. And Monica Bellucci is, is the villain, but we, we don't really get enough of her. I don't think. And uh, so it proceeds like uh, an action film that's not 100% an action movie. It's not up a minute like we expect. And uh, it's not as elaborate in the action as, again, a lot of what we expect today. Maybe that's kind of good that it has a little bit more throwback kind of old school kind of action. But then there are parts that are really bombastic kind of shootouts. Um, but the material, you're dealing with an assassin who has Alzheimer's, uh, but he also has a very moral code. He won't kill specific people. Uh, there's issues about trafficking. Um, as I said, Monica Bellucci is supposed to be the kind of villain. She's supposed to be this upstanding kind of foundation, real estate kind of powerhouse kind of mogul woman. But then she's also uh, cleaning up for her son. Her son who's named Randy. Um, who's into uh, some uh, nasty, nefarious, uh, terrible, terrible things. And uh, I looked at this movie and I thought, oh, are, are, we not, are we not supposed to see like a little bit of a, like a alleged like royal family kind of thing going on here? I mean, the character's named Randy, you know, and, and he's a powerhouse. His mother is like this powerhouse woman. I, I love when we first meet her where she's on the phone and she says something like, it's not about my name, it's about the institution. Uh, the family name, and, and I just thought, wow, there's like a a subversive kind of uh, social commentary happening here. And then the, it kind of putters out. The idea that these these uh, real estate corporations and, and these construction companies who have built uh, these uh, detention facilities on the border and children are disappearing from them for trafficking purposes, um, this is hot button issue things that are that are happening right now. And yet, the movie kind of doesn't go anywhere with that either. And so we have something that presents itself like a poorly paced action movie, but the material demanded that this be kind of a serious based character drama. And we don't get that either. <laughs> we get pieces of this. I mean, uh, Guy Pierce is supposed to be this FBI agent who, whose family has, uh, was killed. And it says something like only 10 months ago. And he's, of course, butting heads with these other, like, uh, head people at the FBI where uh, these, these task force are being shut, shut down and being shuffled around or they're getting stonewalled in their investigations. So there's other, you know, kind of, uh, is there other corruption or, or kickback backdoor kind of uh, issues to resolve here? And he has a few subordinate minority characters, which, again, deserve more. They kind of have stock holder kind of they're there because they have to be there kind of positions which is unfair i almost feel like this did deserve to be like a limited series you know which uh, there are lots of times when i see some limited series where i say this probably should have been a lot shorter or this should have just been a movie <laughs> uh, 
And so, I don't know. It seems like the movie that we got here is not what the story deserved. But yet, it is still watchable and entertaining because it has some action. Because it has a little bit of a step up. Because it has some of that characterization and has some of that deeper material. And has the, the cast that could have gone deeper. So it's really frustrating once you look at the movie and start picking out the pieces like I do with my critical review brain. Um, but as easy background noise, uh, it is still an entertaining flick. Um, and so I guess you have to kind of balance why you're watching the movie. If you're watching it looking for a serious, uh, provocative kind of trafficking heavy drama, this is not that movie. If you're looking for just the latest Liam Neeson shoot 'em up then that's fine. Um, you know, when the movie was coming out, when I first heard about this, was also at the same time that the Liam Neeson movie Blacklight was coming out. And I was really confused when I read sort of the trades about these films because I thought, wait, these are two separate movies? It's not just one movie? <laughs> this is two separate Liam Neeson movies happening here? And my husband said, well, don't worry about it because it's just like, what, Taken 6 and Taken 7. <laughs> I'm not really sure what my opinion is about the movie because I still just can't wrap my head around justifying what the movie is and what the movie should be. And you have to really, this kind of movie, you have to take it for what it is, I suppose. So um, it's probably just become another movie in my Guy Pearce rewatch collection. Um, and uh, as I said, I, I've written uh, a lot about Guy Pearce at In Session Film. I will link to some of that information below. And um, so you can actually read some of the things that I have written instead of listening to me uh, complain about a movie. And uh, you can actually follow along. I have a playlist here on my channel where I do some other video reviews like this. You know, I'd love to hear your opinion. You can comment, uh, like, subscribe, follow, wherever suits you. Uh, and um, so let me know what you think of the movie because I'm still kind of, I think that for a review, and I'm still still scratching my head over this one. <laughs> but, um, so thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And uh, let me know what you think, too. <laughs> Bye.